All right, what is up guys? I hope you're doing well. James here from jamesyforsight.com. And also, um, this is the first one of these kind of videos I've done, uh, talking specifically about like investing and kind of what I'm doing with my own kind of personal um, portfolio in a way. And so if you guys like this, please, please let me know, whether it be through a comment or just liking the video or whatever it may be, um, just so I know to keep doing these if you guys like them. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is I've been, especially since I've gotten a much better job and um, have been out on my own, I've been saving a lot more. Um, even though I don't, I'm not a big saver per se, I'm pretty much just like, I obsess over this investing stuff, if you couldn't tell. So from everything else that's on the channel. So basically I thought I'd start doing some videos about what I do in general for myself. Obviously not saying you should go do this as well. I'm just saying for my own personal situation and kind of my own kind of risk reward analysis for what I do for myself, I this is what I kind of do, right? Saying absolutely nothing with regards to whatever your personal situation is. Obviously that whole um, not investment advice, insert disclaimer, whatever. But um, pretty much what I've been doing with my savings, right? So my bank... I cur it currently makes like 0.3 or 0.5% annualized for just on deposits, whether it be, I think savings is 0.5 and then checking is 0.3 off the top of my head, something like that, right? And so I was like, okay, well, pretty much the only reason why I would have a bunch of savings is at this point, um, if I have to like buy a new car or something like that. <clears throat> excuse me but like something like something of that effect like that kind of expense and so I was thinking you know if I don't need that right now so why don't I just put it into some other kind of equivalent right instead of having it as a commercial bank deposit or cash or whatever some cash equivalent right why don't I move it around right and so I brought up the yield on my uh, savings account, right? Just so to kind of compare it to what I ended up doing. So I basically was like, even with everything going on with yield curve inversions and everything else with U.S. Treasuries, I was like, okay, why don't I just buy short-term T-bills and just continuously roll them over? And now granted, keeping in mind of my situation is like, if I need to go buy a car, okay, well, because there's multiple factors that I was thinking about. I'm putting this in, right? So I have to deal with interest rate risk. What if interest rates go up or down um, significantly? And I was betting that, or I'm, I believe, I guess, if um, even if interest rates skyrocket or just tank, right, on short-term T-bills, one, I don't think they would move that far on short-term notes. I'm not, I'm not a bond trader or anything, so I don't know exactly how much they would move for a relative move or whatever. But even then, buying short term, it doesn't really matter to me because I could just wait for them to mature, right? Say like it's a four week T-bill or whatever it is, right? You can just wait for it to mature, right? And then on the other hand, um, then you have the liquidity risk, right? Basically, or at least I don't know if that's an actual term, that's how I'm terming it, right? So it's the actual liquidity that I'd have, right? So I can't have that money in four weeks. Obviously it's a marketable security, so I could sell it if I needed to, um, so I could still have the money relatively quickly, right? But it's not like in my bank account, I can switch it over to checking and just go, right? And within 20 minutes and have everything going. Hell, within five minutes and have the money being able to move somewhere. Um, I'd have to do a little bit more steps, which is why I'm not doing it with all of my savings, right? It's just basically just keeping enough of my savings in there to be able to take care of, say, a car or something. Um, or some large expense towards literally like, I need to do this now. And this is, not, and by savings, I'm talking about just in commercial bank deposits. So this isn't talking about like a, uh, the cash you have in a safe or something like that, or any precious metals you have, that kind of stuff. That's completely separate category in terms of kind of a personalized portfolio or whatever. I'm just talking about purely what's in the bank account. I don't really see a point in it just sitting there getting 0.3 to 0.5 percent for whatever um there's that also it's offloading um 
ri counterparty risk in a way. Um, instead of having my counterparty as a commercial bank, or in my case, a credit union, it would be, um, I'd be offloading that counterparty risk onto the U.S. government, which I'm can basically just print the money to issue more debt, right? As long as the Fed monetizes it, obviously, which it seems like they are hell-bent on doing, um, or at least have been for the past. Let's see, it's 2022. Uh, 15, roughly 15 years, somewhere in there. Quick math. Um, obviously not a straight number, but you get, you get what I mean. So basically, that was kind of more of the idea I had was even then, like, because if you buy them straight from the treasury, like, or through treasury direct or whatever, you can get them deposited straight into your bank account whenever it matures. So it's like, you don't really have to do anything else. So, whereas if you did it through a broker, I know of some people who have been having troubles with that, to where, like, depending on the brokerage that, that they go through, that has to be, like, a specific amount or basically it just takes forever to get filled rather than just doing it on an auction or putting it in before an auction. Like I submitted an order or whatever, like three days before an auction for, uh, for the T-bills. And it's one of those, yeah, I know the interest rate might move before the auction, but it's also like, even if it starts to go down, it's like the odds of it going below 50 basis points by then I think is worth it. And even if it does, then in four weeks it rolls over back in the bank account and it just stays there. Like it's one of those, um, not really any harm, at least not that I can think of. So that's kind of my thought process on this. Um, probably didn't articulate it the best way. Um, but yeah, it's just one thing that I've kind of started to do with, I guess you could say excess savings. I don't know if by, by defining savings, you're, there's not really an excess in a way, um, but just kind of keeping it separate to where I have enough to basically, if I need to buy a car like outright or whatever, I won't be able to do it like all in cash, but I'll have enough to basically, you know, like do the down payment. And then whenever the treasury is mature, I can basically just pay it off. Right. And so that's not really a problem or, but the odds of that happening who knows, but I don't de I deem them to be rather low, right? Given my situation and with the specific to the car example with how my car is personally right now. So keeping that in mind, right? So I just thought I'd try something new, do a little bit different a video. And also if you guys have any other questions or whatever, feel free to comment them, like the video, subscribe, do all that jazz. Um, so that's in there, but yeah, I'll put in a few more of these types of videos, kind of generalized, and just, yeah, if, if it, see where it goes. That's kind of the whole point of this playlist specifically, is just kind of seeing where it goes for this one, in this respect. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there, so I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you on the next one.